Hello and welcome to another video. So this video and the next one are both a couple of JCG decks that were the top decks for that season. It was uh, volume 3 I think, 6th season, so fair way along now JCG since when we first started covering some of their decks, but this is the portal deck that was ran. It's a fairly decent artifact portal, nothing too crazy, really only techie in the spheric blade. Otherwise everything else is pretty stock standard from the last couple of expansions worth. There's a few additions of course, you know, they adjusted to put in Miriam, which was originally added in I think Dawnbreak, and then, you know, everything else is just kind of your stock artifact deck. But that still performs extremely well and I found in the current meta it seems to do very well, so it's not surprising this was one of the top decks. So we'll get right into the video and check it out. Alright, so our first matchup is against Sword. Sword is definitely another one of the extremely strong decks in the current meta, so it's no surprise that we see that on ladder. Lion also seems to have risen up, but is starting to drop off again, at least as of making this video. Which is not a big surprise, honestly. I mean, the Lion deck that I'm going to show off next is actually okay, but I did have a bit of trouble getting it to run. People are running enough counters that it's hard to get it off the ground. So, meta production, of course, is a great card to start off your game. It does allow you to at least draw a card and put one into the deck, which is fairly good for artifacts, of course. Going into turn two, though, not much of a play outside of Icarus. You could have played Hamlin, but personally, when you have uh, the Mechanic Soldier, Icarus into Mechanic Soldier into Hamlin into Double Artifact is usually the better play. So this is the only turn that I didn't really like in this matchup. It's a little awkward when you have to deal with a 2-3 without any immediate way to do so. But it turned out to work out just fine. They didn't really play anything too crazy, and we should be able to counter this pretty well. Unfortunately, we didn't get an ancient artifact into our only analyzing artifact, though, so luckily the Acceleradium we drew will make up for that. It does mean we have to use an Evo, though. Which it probably ended up being the case either way, so really we've ended up in about the same position, but we've actually drawn a couple of cards. So it's not too bad a turn overall. Of course, the opponent isn't going to be able to do much once they lose this Mars. Mars is a pretty key card in Sword these days. It's a very big, big swing card if you can get it to go off. So they do follow up with another Mars immediately though, so we do have to deal with that now, which is always fun. Lucky Hikrabe should be able to give us that. Especially since we do have Biofab, which is going to allow us to use our artifact immediately. So we're going to get a couple of Ancients, play our Biofab, be able to use both our Ancient Artifacts to clear this board, and be set up pretty nicely. Not so lucky though, we have double Sephira in our hand, along with double um, Desex Machina, so we're not going to be able to use the Sephiras most likely, as we are going to drop our entire hand with the Desex Machina. That doesn't mean we can't win though, it just makes the game a little bit longer. Thinking I probably should have preemptively evoed this, as then this trade wouldn't have hurt as bad. But, I mean, sometimes you gotta take a beating to win the game. So the Desex Mark in a turn, still pretty decent. Still throwing the evo down, as I think it's still worthwhile at this point, especially since they don't have an evo themselves, meaning they can't immediately clear this with their board, they will require something from hand to do the damage they need. And the round table isn't a bad one. But they don't decide to actually clear this, which is good. It does give me open platform to just destroy what I want. So a quick evo on the Icarus does get us the ancient artifact. I'm pretty sure that's guaranteed at this point as they're the only artifacts in the deck. Accelerate does allow us to gain our points back, which is always good. So we are going to be able to go straight back up to six. Which I mean, at this point, definitely isn't bad. And we can of course play out the other cards we need, because Seferic Blade is still going to be able to deal with this 1-2, no problem. And now we've built a pretty stable board for the moment. Lancelot though, not the best card to have to deal with, especially with Vayne. Vayne is going to be a trouble. And I don't really want to draw an artifact at this point even though I probably could have done it effectively. I'd rather use this kind of play, set my board up, go from empty to six cards, and be a little happier. Especially if they played something big, I really didn't want to have to worry about that. 
So we do have a very solid hand, a Mystic Artifact, three Ancients, and the Sephira. And we're only one turn off Sephira, so if we can hold off, we should actually be able to use that to our advantage. Although, we are still a little bit off being able to get lethal with the Sephira. Just because it does require quite a boost to get there. But we didn't do a bad job at dealing with this. So we did put ourselves back out of resonance. Deal with this third Mars, so no more Mars is going to be a problem. And we'll just set up the extra artifact, just in case. Did avoid the meta production because it would have put us in resonance. And we really want to hold on to this synthetic beast and use it to our advantage. Sky Fortress, extremely overpowered for this. I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. Not so lucky for me though, I do need to clear this. So the ancient artifacts are a good way to do so. We can use our meta production to put us back out of resonance, which is good. And we should be able to use substitution pretty comfortably. It's just going to be a little bit of a workaround. As we still wouldn't have had enough on that Sephira. Sephira is only sitting at around, I believe, 9, which is, yeah, pretty straightforward. So we still would have been short on the damage. At least we have the double substitution here, which will very easily clear these off. So we shouldn't have to worry about too much. We can also play the uh, Analyzing, I think, which is good. Which will put us, I mean, very close to what we need for the Sphere. Sphere is at 10, we only need 13 total. Anything we draw now is going to be pretty key. Of course, we have to deal with this now. And because we are in Resonance and I have no way to get out of it, using the Sephira is probably the best play. Actually, sorry, we can get out of it because we do have the H, don't we? So that'll actually work a bit better. I forgot that we had the draw there, but it worked in our favor either way. So we actually don't need to use the Synthetic Beast. We can hold on to it. Although I do decide to end up going with it anyway. Mainly because it's a 12 damage. It puts them at 1 and would have been worthwhile to kill them off with. So a little bit better than, I guess, holding on to it. So that game was definitely a drawn out one, and that's something good that Portal's great at. It can either go quick or it can go slow. Really, it's got a lot of versatility there, so you don't really need to worry about it. Cagliostra, great rune. Always fun to deal with. I mean, this is one of the matches where you want to be more aggressive, put more pressure down. Of course, that isn't always going to be the case, as I'm sure they will be playing something that's going to be annoying to verse. There isn't many rune decks that aren't pretty annoying to verse, honestly. Although, Witch's Cauldron, that's one of the better ones to fight normally. You might say. So an early Icarus. It's definitely going to be on the longer side for a video. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. I know we've had a few short ones lately, but this will be on the longer side for you. So Beast Face Mage, not really a problem. Pretty easy to banish. We can still ping the couple of damage to their face, which is always great. Icarus is amazing for that, getting those just little bits of damage in. Unfortunately, Gingerbread House pretty much negated all of that, but, I mean, that did waste their turn. So I accidentally played this in the wrong order. I should have played Meta Production and then played Miriam, put the couple of cards in our tech and sat pretty comfortably, but I just happened to put them in the wrong order. So, I mean, that's life. Sometimes, you make mistakes. So we get a chance to use our Karabe. With a nice little Evo, we are still going to be able to get the couple of damage to their face. Deal with this pretty well, and not really be worried. Truth Seeker. Again, not really a problem. It's definitely a pain, because it does get the boost, which means we can't kill it with puppets, and probably we'll have to use Substitution. I did end up holding on to the artifacts a little bit. I only really played out the draw one, even though I probably could take advantage of them because we do have the double Sephira, which is probably going to be what we use to close this game. Nice boost again. But we do have Excel and double Ancients now, so... I mean, you can't really go wrong there. I did decide to take the single draw, though. So with Excel and Analyzing, you can actually pretty much close this part of the game out. Not too bad at all. It is definitely still going to take a while to win the match, but 
I mean, once you secure your board like this, you're usually pretty set. Let's go for the meta production, get a nice little draw. And Icarus is pretty helpful. Emergency summoning, and a silent laboratory. Of course, the silent laboratory is pretty good when you've got stuff like that. Or secret laboratory. Then we get a pretty decent way to remove all this. So we have plenty of artifacts. Not really an issue there. Our draw power is good. The more artifacts we use, the better. Because the spheres are going to be powered up. We've only got another turn after this one to wait before we can actually take advantage of them. And with our draw power, we can sit pretty comfortably. So, a nice little Miriam. Don't want to use the Desex because we do have the double Sphere. We don't want to lose those right now. And they should be very close to being lethal. I mean, six isn't bad. With what we have on board, it should be pretty easy to start securing this. Although these wards are going to be a absolute nuisance to use. They are going to get a buff. And then get the extra ward. So I do decide to go with one of the beasts right now. Just so I can remove these and still get the 4 damage to face. And it does still leave me with a pretty decent board to take advantage of the second Sephira. So with the Sphira at 6 and what we have on board, we should deal pretty well. Although they are going to deal massive amounts of damage here with this Grand Summoning. As we now have to get around this, which is honestly quite a pain. Since I don't really have any way around it, I do just decide to chuck another Sphere to the board instead of using my Desex Machina, which was probably the wrong choice. I probably should have just thrown the Desex Machina, accepted the damage, and hoped to draw better, but that's the decision I went with, and it I mean it's not the worst possible option, it's just not the best. So we still get to hold on to the 2-1. We did end up drawing an H artifact, which was pretty much perfect. I couldn't have asked for a much better draw there as that it will at least buy us the time we need. While at the same time giving us a pretty nice nice hand to play off of. Do decide to chuck that against the 1-2. I don't really want to deal with any kind of buffing out of buffing stuff with the Earth Sigils, so if I can avoid that a little bit, that's the best way to do things. Opponent again going with Grand Summoning. Getting their buffs. We must nearly have worn them down at this point though, I mean, there isn't too much that they could possibly have. We are going to deal with the wards pretty well, but outside of that all we can really do now is pass the turn and hope that we have a decent draw, and honestly this hand is pretty good. Radiant Artifact, Mecha Wing, Magsteel Lines, I mean, you can't, you can't go too wrong with these, it's going to buff our deck up nicely. Again, more wards. It's probably the only trouble I've had in this matchup is the fact they had so many wards. It's not really a problem to remove them, it's just a problem that there's so many of them. But the ancient artifact at least should help out. So I decide to duplicate the ancient artifact, makes sense, I mean it'll boost up any kind of future sphere that we may draw, because we should still have one in the deck. And it allows us to remove these very effectively. And go face for 4 damage. I mean, we want to get that damage in now. There is Cagliostra, so great. Probably the only card I didn't want to see right now, mainly because its damage output is pretty crazy, and the fact that it can take advantage of its Earth Sigils is kind of annoying. So we do have to deal with that, which is a little frustrating. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that I can deal with it. All I can really do is fill my board with stuff and hope Because we can pretty easily fill this board, hold on to a couple of puppets. We do need to wait until we can get into resonance, as that's probably the only way we're going to have a chance, but taking 7 damage should be fine. Normally they can't buff up that quickly or burn me down that quickly with this deck. I mean, most Earthrite decks don't have that much burn power that they could burn you down 10 damage. Not without some major setup, and they just didn't have that there. So now we've just got to play around and deal with their board, which is fairly easy. 
Don't want to ram the Radiant though, as that would take us a fairly, fairly bad turn for us. But we can go for a comfortable 7 damage with this Icarus and Radiant Artifact for over half their health. Yeah, sorry, 6 damage for roughly half the health. Overestimated my damage output a little bit. Now we have a heap of analyzing artifacts and one ancient, so I mean you can't go too wrong, even though they're playing triple Conjure Golem. So this draw is very important, and it is Excel, which does open up the lethal option. So we still would have been okay, we could have dealt with these, it would have just been a little annoying, but this actually gives us a pretty perfect lethal. We're also going to pretty much draw a whole new hand and be pretty right now. So all the analyzings take out the ward, we have 8 damage on board in Storm, more than enough to just close this out. Also could have used Spheric Blade, but that didn't feel quite as fun. I really wanted to see what we could actually draw out of the deck. And we drew pretty well, honestly. Mystic Artifacts, Spheric Blade, Acceleradium, all pretty nice cards. And that did give us the lethal there. So while I found this Portal Deck's games tend to go a bit longer, as you can probably tell by the video, it's definitely a solid deck. I haven't found myself really losing with it at all, and consistently being able to top out pretty nicely. Although you do need a little bit of luck sometimes, like in that rune matchup, it was just more that we were getting dragged out. We could handle it just fine, it was just taking a long time to get to that lethal point. So if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe, you'll find the deck list in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.